Good morning, everyone. Again, uh, I hope you enjoyed the keynote. And now we are diving deep into all the sessions we have, all the 85 of them. So welcome, everyone. And as uh, Chirag announced me, I am Vesan Opanen. Please call me Vesku. I'm a principal consultant for modern work, or modern work life, as it should be today, and also a Microsoft MVP. And there's my contact information. Of course, uh, please do follow my blog and, and, and read the articles, but uh, you're also very welcome to uh, LinkedIn with me and, of course, be in touch with me at Twitter. Or Teams message me uh, to my address. Uh, something, a few words I want to say, share about Sulava, of course, because um, uh, then, uh, it, it's great to have an employee that, employer that uh, allows us to be present. Hello. Okay. Uh, sorry, uh, I have some other. Uh, just uh, sorry. I have one other tab open. So I have to find uh, which one is still unmuted. Yeah. All right, sorry about that. Uh, it's really difficult to talk if you have other session going on at the same time. All right, but uh, yeah, you've already now read the slide. And I promise this is about demos. Yes, I don't even have agenda here uh, to show you. So we just dive deep into the demo part. All right, so hopefully that was one of the hiccups of the day. So this is the view we are being, uh, using today uh, for, for most, most of the time, Teams. And why I wanted to make this uh, kind of easy session to fire up uh, and to talk about like personal, your, uh, boost your personal and team level productivity in Teams. And uh, I especially wanted to kind of uh, show, uh, show some emphasis on the easy part. Uh, especially when you want to boost your personal productivity, there's good uh, uh, shortcuts in Teams, but that can get you started even when you are not using, uh, uh, when you are not doing the Power Automates usually, you are not feeling that you are a very experienced power user or something like that. Instead, you are an end user uh, with some motivation to do things better. And, and to get started on that, uh, of course, something you uh, want to know is that there's this flow application uh, inside Teams. And that Teams uh, flow application is going to become the Power Automate application, hopefully later this month. But uh, since it hasn't rolled out yet, I'm still talking about the flow app. But uh, things will only get easier uh, with the upcoming application uh, on, on the Power Automate. And there's the part for approvals as well. And this approvals part is going to ha have its separate application. And that approvals makes it possible for you to create and, and do approvals right within Teams. So what I did earlier, I'm not uh, going to uh, scare you off with by diving deep into fl uh, flow already. But instead, I did one of the on-message triggers. Uh, already uh, earlier about the approving a message. So what this, what are these uh, unselected message triggers are? They are basically something that you can make actions based on a message. This is also something I try to refer to on my piece in the keynote. Is that when you are, uh, when you want to add more business logic, make things happen based on a single message. That's the kind of the trigger where you can hook into. You can get into that uh, now easily with Flow and Power Automate, but uh, of course you can build your applications there. And yeah, we are not going there. We are talking about the entry level information. But just to show how the approvals work in Teams, I only have this approval uh, uh, the demo here. Teams first uh, demo. I'm going to put myself here as an approver. So what will happen that it will go there and, and uh, raise the approval to come to the flow. It will raise uh, a few alerts in a moment. It's not here yet. It, uh, with flows, it always takes a moment. But now you can see there's approved Teams message by, and, and there's information about the approval, link to message, the message content, and the approval reject. 
But of course, uh, what I want to show is the approvals tab where you can see, okay, this is where my approvals are coming. And I can go ahead and do things uh, in here. I can reassign it, I can reject or approve it. Or hopefully things get approved. So I mean, if you are thinking about, okay, how to use Teams better, this is one, uh, one thing that put your approvals in here and in with the upcoming approval application, you can also create approvals for documents and things uh, very easily within that application. Or we can go in a, in a chat. If we are using the mobile, we can see the approval here. We can go ahead and approve it just within a chat and, and uh, put it forward. All right, that's just showing uh, a kind of a, a flow into information. Again, show that flow later, uh, how it's done. It's not complicated but because the thing I want to really show the user entry level information is how to get started with this. Uh, when you go to flows, there's this create from template. And this is going to make things very easy. You see a few flows here, but they sound OK. Post message teams, something like that, notify the team. Uh, but these are not teams based. The trick is that you just keep on clicking on to see more templates. So there are things like alert me when I'm mentioned in Microsoft Teams. Yeah, OK, uh, that's one thing, but that's one, one channel based. But when we click more and we can just keep on clicking more uh, of these uh, uh, templates, we can see some interesting ones like create a task from a message. So we, uh, with that, we can see there's a planner involved. So we can use this to create a task from a single message. Okay, let's do that. See how it goes. And uh, looking, looking there, it's going to uh, put my authentication in. And then I can start selecting the planner group ID and the planner ID. Yeah, so I can go ahead and choose the planner. Uh, let's go for uh, Teams first here somewhere there and then I can choose uh, teams first tasks for example and I hit create uh, there's the edit in advanced mode which would do something more there but what I have now is that I have this uh, create task from message and if I take a look at that uh, just for the curiosity I can see this for selected message uh, creating a task and it's putting everything in place already. And then it's also letting you know that I have created a task. Just to be careful, I will save it. So I didn't do anything else. And now if I go to the Teams first team and I go and check it out, I can see more actions and clicking more. Yeah, some things are getting duplicated. But here is create a task from something. Right, um, we click on that, and we can start seeing. Okay, the task uh, Teams uh, first demo, and it's due say today, and we submit it. And Flow sent me a card already. Uh, the planner task created. I can go ahead and click this to be the task. Yeah, it's opening planner. Something went wrong. That's a good demo effect. But instead, what I want to see is the plan uh, Teams first tasks in that team. And I can see the Teams first demo here. Uh, yes, as you could show, it, it's not necessarily perfect, but I can assign this to Amy. It's just a planner board, no bucket. I can put it to do if I want to. Uh, but uh, uh, that's the way you can do it. By marking messages in your Teams, uh, for, your uh, for your team to be taken care of later. And, and this is a, a really kind of a yeah, fun and easy way to do this. Of course, you can uh, make it a bit more personal by do, uh, putting the, the, those tasks uh, by editing that flow later. But uh, there's one thing about the flow. Now it's your personal. Uh, this is just you. But here's the running users. If I go here and add the same for everyone in uh, Teams first team, yeah, it was originally 
40 Saturday, Saturday event last Saturday. So I just put every member of member there. So now everyone in the Teams first team could use that flow. And just to uh, check that around that it is really so. Uh, let's go here and just going to refresh for be really certain about this because Amy is part of uh, the alter ego. Amy is part of Teams first. I can go ahead and check. Uh, is it here? Not yet. Hopefully it will it will come here. So it will take a rollout for a few moments. Uh, this is what you get when you start uh, being creative in the middle of the demo. Okay, I can check that a bit later. It goes there, but it takes a while. Or if I want to do something different, I could go and instead start making edits. Edits. Yeah, this is always scary when you start doing this, but you could uh, add it to do, for example, put the board there, especially if this is your personal task. And, and I know there's a, I did a blog about this and then Stole improved the, uh, uh, this functionality in, in his blog as well. And, and I think he made the uh, package available for downloading, downloading and using. But this is just a great way to show, okay, you can do customizable things. And, and in here, if you add it to do, you want to do some settings, especially if this is your personal uh, board. So, so you are doing this on a personal level. If you're doing this on team level, then you have to work, uh, think about more about the team level using the, putting the information to the planner, for example. But that's a very easy way uh, uh, to kind of uh, start being more productive uh, in teams by, hey, let's create tasks out of messages. Okay, what about if we want to, uh, we have an interesting topic we are talking about and we want to create a meeting. Uh, Let's see. There are actually a uh, lots of interesting uh, uh, flows here that are, are, are available. Just a follow up on a message. I will come back to it in a moment and let's go and until we find that creating an event out of the message. Here, create an event from a message. You can open that. Okay, this is assuming you are already using a bit of Teams. And, and we can go ahead and choose the calendar. Sorry, that's in Finnish and choose the time zone. And this template isn't the perfect one. Uh, but it will give you some ideas how to uh, do things. Okay, we are creating an event from a message. Let's go to the edit mode. And we can see there's a create a calendar event. All right. Uh, but we also have the trigger for selected message editing the adaptive card. Sounds bad, but what we are really wanting to set is that, okay, here's the meeting title, here's the recipients, here's some description, and then the timing. And we don't have to worry about the timing because it's initializing all these, but we don't want to do a uh, Outlook calendar event. Uh, no, instead uh, we want to do a Teams meeting. So we click on the Add to Action, we hit on the uh, Microsoft Teams, and then we can see there are different options for Teams, like create a Teams meeting. It's in preview, so if you don't have access to the preview features uh, or, or the uh, preview parts in the Power Automate, then unfortunately you can't do this, but uh, assuming you have, then we can start adding. Okay, what was the um, meeting about? We'll go here. Uh, we can see the meeting title. Uh, we can put the message, uh, which was basically the meeting description. And we would put the time zone. And this is what we have to choose. Uh, because, okay, let's find there my current time zone. And then we have the start time and the end time. And the required attendees, we want to put the people uh, that are mentioned. Uh, the meeting recipients in there. Then we save it. Uh, the original event, when I removed the Outlook part or, or the just Outlook calendar event, it did miss a few of these. So I re really recommend if you want to do this, yeah, use this to create a Teams meeting. And you can 
and make it available to your team. But we can again test this one, uh, not in, uh, in tasks, but uh, let's use this uh, one message as an example. And we have a create Teams meeting. I think I have a double of them because I had the original, uh, no, the event. All right, where's my event? Ah, it took a moment. There's the create an event. Uh, as you know, this keep the names short and something you can remember. Uh, uh, teams uh, first demo, and I can put Amy uh, there uh, and put the teams first demo. And we just uh, schedule it for, to, uh, for tomorrow, and it's not 2 a.m. It's not perfect, but again, it's something um, you can uh, work on. And now, if everything goes right, we should soon have a, at least we got the card from the flow. There's a demo or meeting created, but the calendar will tell us that we have a demo uh, with Amy. So this is, uh, I don't know if that's, that's really complicated or not. This has a few more steps than the uh, entry user uh, would like to see, but for a bit more experienced user, you can create things like this. Uh, and make the meeting about the topic. You, of course, you would want to include the meeting text or the message text in the meeting. And we can, I can show you how it's done. I go to the uh, to the message, and I can put to the same next line and browse through, and I can see plain text message content, or put it as HTML, and I can put the message content. And when you create a meeting, you already know about what this is about. All right, uh, for uh, entry, uh, kind of the uh, AC entry user level, you may want to be reminded about Teams messages. This is something I hear heard a lot and I keep hearing, okay, I want to get back to the message a bit later. We just click around until we find the follow up on a message. Okay, this is fun. Uh, we just need the Teams, we continue, and then you would hit the save. But uh, for the demo, I want to edit the adaptive card and I will change this 20 minutes to one minute. So if you want to change this, it's uh, quite simple. I put the save card, I save it. So I should have to follow up on a message uh, for, for this uh, message part here. And it will take a minute uh, to launch. There's the follow up on a message. And I put it to remind me in a minute. So this is perhaps something an entry level user can do. And, and get something on personal productivity, or this can be something you can give out to everyone. Okay, so it takes a minute, but it will uh, it will fire up soon. And while waiting for that, uh, this was something I, I got uh, feedback about. How do you, if you want to create a recurring meeting to the planner. Then one of the great ways to do it, uh, you can do a scheduled meet, uh, Power Automate or Flow. Because if you have a task you want to do in, a, uh, let's put, put this uh, uh, recurring uh, planner task, task you want to do uh, regularly, and we can then repeat it every, I don't know, I've just put it daily here, uh, or let's put it minute and kill it later. So I can create this one. So there's a recurrence that will fire up every minute. And I go here. Okay, now I got the message reminder. I go to planner and I create a task. And okay, now I have to fix this, but uh, this is on personal stuff or on a team level. I can go to the, uh, again, Teams Fest and fetch the Teams Fest tasks, uh, put the uh, re. Uh, recurring task there and we want to put it to, to do because we don't have anything else and we assign it to Amy. So we are going to, Amy is going to get a lot of tasks to do. And it will be starting to fire up every minute. All right, the message reminder here, uh, we got it from Flow. There's a reminder to follow up on the message. I want to view it. 
it will open teams and there it is. That's kind of the one of the uh, nice things I, I, I really like about this um, uh, these flows. And in a minute, uh, when the minute passes, there should be a task. Okay, there's a recurring task for Amy already. And uh, learning from the last experience, if you have a recurring task and you want to test it, you may want to turn it off uh, because um, it will create those tasks every minute otherwise. So it works as it's supposed to be. So there's already tasks. And Amy can go ahead and go to the planner. Uh, on Amy, it's actually now tasks application. We can see it. Hey, it's already transformed. Amy got it. My the other account hasn't. But you can see all right, the tasks, the team first tasks are here, and I can uh, start working on them. And when I'm done, I can keep them done here. So uh, the tasks. Uh, application is rolling out, so if you are playing around with uh, planners uh, a lot, uh, it's going to be really, really helpful for them. Okay, and then something we may, may want to do, I have a, uh, one of these uh, the flows here, like adding to a knowledge base, but I want to, before going to that, I want to highlight a couple of things, because uh, how did I create that uh, to knowledge bases that there isn't a really template here, but there are templates like you can uh, you can create actions based on a uh, based on Teams messages like saving message to OneNote. You can take that that message and replace the OneNote part with something else. Or if you want to, you do do that. It's a very interesting way to start adding messages to your OneNote, so you can work on work on them later. Or you can use this to post a message when a new member is added to a team, which means a welcome message. Hey, welcome to our team. Here's some information about our playbook and practices, how we are doing these other channels, what they are supposed to be doing. And going forward, there are uh, interesting kind of uh, things you can add. Like if you have a form, uh, then you can you just use these templates to get information uh, to Teams when a new response is submitted, or create a list item from a message. And this is something I used for the uh, for the adding to the knowledge base because that's a, a SharePoint list I have. Or if you are using something else, create a work item from a message. So these templates are all very often overlooked. Or if you want to add this to a business, create an opportunity from a message. You can put in information there. So. And that's it. That's the whole list of templates available for uh, from the flow app. But the new upcoming power app is going to be more there, and it's going to be even simpler to create these flows. So I wanted to show you the uh, adding a message to the knowledge base uh, because I'm going to be using that with uh, my bot demo. Uh, it's a very simple thing. I have a for selected message. I ask for the title and information, and I create that to the SharePoint list uh, to have uh, uh, some information about the keywords. Uh, so this was the, basically the title uh, uh, from the adaptive card, and then the plain text message and link to message. And, and then I get the, the information back. And if I go ahead and uh, look for the knowledge base, I only have one row there. Uh, it's uh, using the lists in here, so I can see, okay, what is Teams first. Uh, uh, does the uh, create opportunity one require premium license? I don't think so, but you will need a Dynamics license. So, uh, so it will enable you some of those licenses. If you are interacting with Dynamics, you of course need the Dynamics license. And I want to uh, highlight that, okay, I wanted to show you uh, this approval flow in the beginning before going there, the approve message, and showing a bit of that. Uh, it's very simple. I, again, I have the for selected message. I ask uh, for the topic, and I then can add in people in here with uh, some hardcore choices. And I create the approval. There's the app. Uh, 
for that. And then I just put the information out. So it's uh, very simple here. Something you want to notice that uh, enable notifications. If this is yes, it will send it to email. And so you can tune the approval in here as well. Okay, I guess it's time to show around some, do some botting. I have a TeamsFest bot here. I first show uh, what capabilities I have, and then I will go to the bot and show its internals to you. This is more on the power user level, and how, how you can create a more organizational bot, uh, or do some answer some tasks, or, or do some more information. This is done using the pro project Oakdale, which is uh, if you have a Teams license, then you have a license to create this. You can create 500 uh, environments with that, which basically means that you can create it to 500 teams in your talent. And you can publish bots that, so that everyone in your organization can use them. But um, of course, you can create bots that are only available for your team members as well. So what I want to do uh, is uh, create a new team. I could go there and choose from one of these, or I can just uh, type something similar there. And, and uh, so I can use it to totally with my, uh, without using the mouse, or uh, if I'm on the phone, I'm accustomed to the writing, then I, or I'm uh, dictating my speech out, it, it can use that as well, uh, and depending on the mobile phone. So if there's a speech to text uh, built inside. All right, let's create an event team. And this is for uh, Teams First 2020. And a demo, just, uh, we are just demoing and we are making the team public. And it will start uh, soon telling me what it's going to do. This, there's part in here that requires a premium license because creating a team with specific template is not possible without a uh, premium license now. So that's something to consider. Uh, but I will start over and show the, uh, some of the other things, like uh, let me know how much I have vacation left. And as you know, it's greeting me all the time. I didn't have to sign in. It knows who I am. I can connect to the backend service, which is just the CDS data uh, in, in this case, and get the information. So these are parts of the what you can do with this platform. Or if I want to uh, book a meeting uh, as well, it's using the similar case I already showed in the flow, like create a scheduled meeting, a Teams meeting, book a meeting. I want to, somebody from IT support uh, uh, to have a, have a meeting with me. I, I need something, some help from there. And I'd give a title and it will go through the available times and then show me, okay, here's the uh, here's the person you are having a meeting with and with the specific time. So it's going to happen in very soon. Now, uh, in my time scale. Uh, so I can go there and book the meeting. And the final uh, I want to show uh, is the uh, knowledge base. Search something. Uh, if I just put Teams first here, this is why I have the add knowledge base uh, in flow. I have added a information that can be just in SharePoint list. Uh, the search is limited there, but you can do it uh, half okay-ish. It's, it's far from perfect, but you can use a SharePoint list there if you want. Or uh, let's do another search. And I put it in a format that's not in the, uh, in the SharePoint list. Uh, list. Tell me about this first. And instead, uh, I have a logic there that if it doesn't find an answer from a list, it will go ahead and ask it from the Q&A methods. And I also formatted the messages differently, so you can see it's uh, it's, it's a more rich format, and, and in here it's just a plain text. So how do these look like? Let's go for chatbots. And I have several bots already, but uh, Teams Fest bot is what interests me. Uh, it's really easy to get started, as you saw in there. There's a create a new bot, start in five minutes, and you have a basic, uh, basic thing there. I usually close the text and go to topics, because that's the logic there. Uh, I 
the conversational flows. And with that five minute bot, you would have all these lessons. You could start trying them out, making edits very simply and, and going forward here. And I just have a few trigger phases, a uh, high is one. Uh, basically, I have uh, hooked in the high uh, to go directly to this topic because I, uh, this wasn't much about the, too much about the conversation flow, but it was more about, OK, let's show you how you can connect these bots to, your, uh, to other systems. But uh, if you are thinking about the organizational level, these are very useful examples, like you have a knowledge-based search or FAQ search for IT, HR, payroll, and in case they don't find the answer, you could book up a meeting with the person from there. That's why I added them both. So look, looking through there, uh, uh, if I go to the knowledge-based search, what are you searching for? That was the question. And uh, when I, for each of these, I could add uh, actions, like asking more questions, making condition for this to split, call to action, which is a calling a power automate flow, showing a message or ending uh, the path. But in here, I will go to the IT support uh, check. And uh, so I think, that, uh, yeah, check your name. All right, that was the right path. Lost myself for a moment. And I have some information like question text. All right, and then I can go ahead and search uh, from the SharePoint list. I only have kind of do it at in lowercase, so it's a very stupid search. And but the, show, uh, the idea is to show, okay, it doesn't have to be too complicated but it's not usually then a perfect one. But I just go ahead for the search for the answers and go ahead and check out if there's a solution. And if I don't have the best answer, I will go to the Q&A Maker database and, uh, and then I can go ahead and start getting the information from there, getting the best answer and returning that uh, in here. So that's a, a very, very easy way to create a Q&A query. And in case you don't get an answer, the bot can, could ask, uh, OK, let's, uh, you didn't want to an get an answer. Can we book a meeting? I just had it in separate path. And you can go ahead and show around, OK, let's schedule a meeting. And you already saw part of this. But what you, I didn't show is that, OK, I have a list of persons. You could be fetching them from uh, some other system, perhaps shifts. Uh, it doesn't matter where you get. I have them hard-coded in the demo. And I have the user profile who is calling this bot. I get that directly from Teams. I just need that, uh, he, uh, the person's ID. And then I call for finding meeting times. I have a very broad schedule here. I like it finding a time between just now or eight days ahead into the future. But hey, I can use this to find a meeting with specified duration and then uh, passing through that. Uh, yeah, this is more than the entry level stuff here. Uh, but basically finding out who, who is the first possible, first best example, I only uh, return one. and. When I have the candidate name, I create that Teams meeting. And that's it. Uh, I also do the some time zone conversion. So when I'm returning that value to my uh, Power Virtual Agents, I can have it in the right format. And I am saving the templates last. Uh, one of the key things was here, of course, when you are asking how much vacation is left. I have the user ID because we need to know who's calling that. But OK, let's not share that. Hit the edit. OK, I know the user ID. I get the profile as before, and I search the vacation in from, uh, uh, from a backend. And then I can return that information directly to, uh, back to user. So you can see using the flow uh, here makes a lot of sense, and, and you can automate things, simple things with this uh, really easily. Of course, when you want to go to the real HR system, get the information, 
uh, that's going to be a bit more complex. But if you have some questions, you have some like easy answers you can give to the user. You can create that kind of uh, knowledge basis in, in with lists uh, or uh, using the CDS. That is uh, part of the project out there. That's a limited to the uh, real CDS, but that's a still a database. And the last one, of course, uh, which is more complex, is the create creation of the new team. I just uh, do some checking about okay, what kind of team, getting the name, so we can ask questions. And public or not, I wanted to keep this simple. I have more complex expert example also about the provisioning part, but going to the uh, team creation flow, uh, yeah, it has succeeded, which is a good thing. And actually, when it's creating a provisioned uh, provisioning team, it's it's taking a while, but. We have all the relevant information, and, and uh, then we get the user who is requesting that. We are getting the team template. In this case, uh, it was the uh, event template, and we have a specific value for that. And that value uh, is, uh, let's see if my uh, admin center works, because you have already seen uh, the team's templates. Uh, you, you can create new teams based on some templates. And so they are defined in here. And if I go ahead and make an event team or I create my own templates, I can have its template ID right from the admin center. So I can uh, go ahead and do changes on the template, but I don't have to change the flow anymore. Then I create a new team, and this is the one that requires the premium uh, part on the Power Automate uh, because while there is an interesting uh, action with Microsoft Teams, there's this uh, create a team, but it doesn't have a template. So, so you can't uh, create a custom team with that. But with this, we can patch in the template we want. We put the information, we put the settings we want to the team, and uh, it, then, it's pro uh, then it's provisioning that. And if I go and take a look, I have the Teams West 2020 team. Uh, it has some patchwork to be done, like removing the wikis, but it has created uh, channels. It had created me uh, applications, like I could uh, start that in the planners. So you have the structure. It doesn't automate these parts, but it's still a very easy way to start creating your own. Uh, of course, then you don't want users to use this create team because uh, there's a, they can create the <laughs> templates from there. But if you want to do a more uh, governed provisioning, then your bot can do that. You can request a team. Hey, you can do that from a phone. What else we had here? We had a meeting uh, with IT support. It's in here in the calendar as, as well. So I hope this was an interesting uh, run through uh, of, of the capabilities you can do with Flow. The first we started with the uh, Flow app and that is the automated, uh, sorry, the templates, uh, creating flows with templates that will make it uh, really user friendly and really, uh, uh, really easy to get started and start using the Power Automate for personal productivity. Then you can publish them to your team and um, they will be accessible by your team members and, and they can take advantage of those flows. Then you are already becoming a team's champion. And then on the last part, uh, using the Power Automate bots, uh, uh, Power uh, Virtual Agent bots, to create a kind of organizational level teams or, or productivity parts, uh, asking uh, to kind of take burden off from IT or HR or some other parts, and, and they can uh, get a boost in there. Of course, you can use it to generate questions uh, or create tickets, everything like that. And, and that's a very great topic you should dive into. There are more sessions today about uh, PPAs, those bots as well. And why I'm looking here is that, okay, I had all the demos and my ending slide is really, really easy. Uh, please provide the feedback and, and let me know how I did it, because uh, of course I want to get better in this. So just let me know about the room for improvement. improvement. And Excellent. You have questions, Thank you. That was a very good session. Really good demos. Loved it. And and 
it's, it's great to see all the the previews and you know some of the intricacies around the power of virtual agents and the general team so yeah i think uh, uh that's you know really thank you for your time uh and you know giving up your day uh, to be here at teams fest and hopefully the attendees uh took away a lot from it and uh yeah just want to say big thanks to you and uh I think keep an eye on the chat if there's any questions. Um, but uh, other than that, I would just say once again, please provide us the feedback because that really helps us to to tailor not only the session for future, uh, but also the event as well uh, in terms of you know what you liked uh, and and things like that. So yeah, that would be really helpful. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah, and it was great having you moderate. Uh, Thank you, welcome. Thank you. And if you have any questions, go ahead later, ask me in the lounge or punch me a message. Uh, uh, the main reason not to use bots is the pricing of the Power Virtual Agents. So this, uh, the one I was showing around, uh, that's included uh, with Teams license. Uh, the project Oakdale uh, that gave, uh, began its preview phase at the Ignite. So these uh, bots are now in preview inside Teams. You don't have to have that pricey Power Virtual Agents price, but instead you will add that Power Virtual, Power Virtual Agents application to your teams, and you can start creating bots there, and they are free. So they are included with the M365 licenses. So I hope that answered the question. Uh, it's including uh, a CDS lightweight. It's not the full CDS. Uh, it, it, it has uh, capabilities, uh, some of the capabilities you can start creating a database with that, but it's not uh, a fully fledged uh, license. That you can actually you create power apps in there as well uh, very easily, and, and because they are included in the licensing, but they are limited to team level. And, and that environment is at the team level as well. If I go to the Teams Fest uh, in the new Power Apps application. I can see and browse through the tables here. Uh, and uh, so I could start creating a new table. Okay, interesting that one table of mine didn't show up. Uh, let's see if. Okay, I'm in a wrong space, that's why. This is uh, something because all these exist in one, uh, one space only. Okay, let's see if that's there. It wasn't in Teams Fest team, it was in bot space. So uh, in here I have the vacation day and, and I could start okay, seeing okay, what's in here. And if I add a column, there's lots of uh, uh, data types I can do. I can do also references. This is an excellent way. Uh, to st uh, how do you find the start? If you go to the applications, and you start uh, searching for Power Virtual Agents, you can see, see the application here and you will add it to yourself. And then uh, you are going here to the Power Virtual Agents app and you can hit the start now. That will ask to which team do you want to create an application or it will create the environment first there. Uh, this, I hope I'm not missing a question. Um, uh, what connection is running your flow that uh, sets up through the flow app in Teams? Uh, when you uh, the one who sets it up, but uh, it, it will also ask uh, when, when you start using that, it will ask for your connection. So, so if uh, that's a new connection, let's see if Amy already uh, got it. I don't know because. Let's refresh and it will show around. OK, there's a new flow and, and it has some permissions. It needs this there. I forgot that it might take a, uh, create a task from a message. I think that was that. So it will ask for the setup uh, in there. And so I can put in the, my configuration. So I have to have the access there. Run only user for flow, so users can use your flow with your data connections, or uh, they, they are putting the data connection 
uh, in there so they, they you can see how to use theirs. They are not necessarily using yours. It, uh, it that depends on the uh, on the flow as well. So the, the user permissions is there. Okay. Uh, when I click publish for a bot, it only makes available to be added into the team. Uh, it doesn't make it available for the whole company by default. Uh, you're there, all right? And okay, let me switch. I think uh, there's going to be a hard stop for me soon in this room. Okay, in here. So if I go to the bots again, and I go for the Teams first bot, and I didn't show the publishing parts uh, because, uh, but in here you have the icon for publishing. Uh, if you want to make it available for the uh, end users, you can hit the publish, and you then uh, that's publishing the information what you have done in the bot or any of the team members. Uh, it now supports that you can have multiple editors there. But when you share the bot, you can make it available uh, through the organization or add to your team. I have done this uh, for the whole organization here, but going for the App Store and especially your company line of business applications, you can start seeing the bot in here and everyone in your team can go ahead and add it there. <laughs> yeah, uh, no problem with the, with the publishing. You don't, it's on the team level at max, so uh, at first anyway. So it, it's really easy to start testing around. All right, if you have any more questions, feel uh, free to uh, patch me in lounge, for example. I keep hearing the lounge on my background already. People are talking there, so. Thank you, and I really hope you are enjoying the Teams Fest. Look at the schedule, look at for the rooms, uh, enjoy the day fully. This, uh, this is going to be uh, so much for, for this community.